Now, Congresswoman Karen Bass, Democrat from California, and MSNBC contributor Maria Teresa Kumar. Thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Thank Thanks you for having us. Congresswoman, so Republicans now are back to blaming single moms for poverty in America. You know, it's, it's really important uh, because you almost want to laugh at what they're saying, but what they're attempting to do, we're on the 50th anniversary of President Johnson's speech on the war on poverty and launching the war on poverty, and we cannot for one minute allow them to act as though they want to address poverty because you are talking about the Republican Party that essentially wants to dismantle the safety net. What they believe is, is that poor folks need a pep talk and a kick in the butt, and that that is the way you reduce poverty, without looking at some of the structural issues. So it's wonderful Eric Cantor says that schools are needed. That's absolutely the case, but then he doesn't want to provide funding for schools. People need jobs. We need to raise the minimum wage. We need to extend unemployment. There are very specific things that we need to do to lift people out of poverty. It's not rocket science. You know, uh, Maria, the uh, Washington Post obtained a memo that House Republican leaders sent to rank and file members. It, it tells lawmakers to be emphatic toward the unemployed. Uh, uh, it, sa it, it says be empathetic as they are emphatic about their policies to, quote, be empathetic toward the unemployed and to remember that for every American out of work, it's a personal crisis. Uh, this was, you know, they kind of like be gentle but firm. But just today, Senator Marco Rubio mocked the president's plan to raise the minimum wage. Listen to this. Really, this, this is their solution to what the president has called the defining issue of our time? Raising the minimum wage may poll well, but having a job that pays $10 an hour is, is not the American dream. I mean, so at one level, you know, stand by your guns, be emphatic, but be empathetic, make sure you know it's a personal crisis. But now you have Rubio back mocking the president's plan. Well, and just because you change your talking points doesn't mean that you have policies to back them up. And right now, they don't have policies to back them up. If the right. GOP was really interested in alleviating poverty, they would invest heavily on macro policies, such as doing, an, doing heavy investment in infrastructure projects. That way, we'll get a lot of the middle class back to work, and we'll get a lot of the folks that are, have stopped seeking jobs interested back in getting engaged. And that's just one policy. When Eric Cantor says that he's interested in, in funding education, well, kids can't Go to, you can't learn if they have empty bellies. Right. Let's make sure you're mm -hmm. passing the SNAP program. When you say that you believe that we have to stop paying unemployment benefits, but at the same time, the GOP party is recognizing that people have stopped looking for employment, so we actually have a bigger unemployment problem. They're basically turning away from the masses, trying to come up with fun, quick, quippy, uh, talking points but not really addressing our overall issues and that's the fundamental problem and that's when you're talking about the GOP whether it's a war, their anti you know their anti poverty stances or when you're talking the war on women or immigration or what have you is that they speak a good game but their policies don't back it up congresswoman uh, even though the GOP doesn't have uh, any real anti poverty agenda the president does he talks uh, and he's fighting to expand health care access, right. raising the minimum wage, extending right. unemployment benefits, and universal pre-K education. Well, and also, Rev, remember, there was the American Jobs Act that the president proposed right. a couple of years ago. That was very specific policy. And just look at the uh, Affordable Care Act for a minute. If you are going to expand health care to 30 million people, who do you think is going to do that? We need health care workers. So if you want to talk about education and training, you want to talk about a job that can't be outsourced, uh, look at the health care industry. So health care reform in and of itself is a jobs program. We need to put resources there. If they were serious, that's what they would focus on. But they're not. They are focused on cleaning up their message in the same way they tried to clean it up around women. That's you know, right. meanwhile, uh, uh, Maria, they keep uh, uh, just denigrating uh, the poor. Listen right. to this. What is unemployment insurance? It is paying people not to work. It's like a paid for vacation for people. Yeah, well, the minimum wage makes no sense whatsoever to me. I mean, honestly, it's just the teenage, black teenage unemployment act. The black teenage unemployment act, Maria. 
Ouch. I mean, it's not only is it despicable, but it's also unfair for the folks that are, have been trying to find ways to put food on their table for their families. And this is a very sensitive time when we have the highest inequality since 1923 in our in our country, where you have Americans who want to work and can't find it, and to be disrespectful of the needs of uh, families in this in this current stage is, is unacceptable. The fact that they, you know, Marco Rubio, you know, is flipping and says, "Well, ten dollars an hour isn't really going to make a difference in people's lives." Well, never. Neither is the current minimum wage, which is seven dollars and twenty-five cents. So I think that it's a matter of. Where is this co passionate conservatism that you're starting to see bubble up again in messaging? It's not delivering the true thing. And unfortunately, what they're doing is that they're, they're basically race baiting by yeah. using, di using right. different language. And that's not OK. Congresswoman, uh, 50 years after the President Johnson's speech, this president and members of Congress still have to fight a war on poverty for right now. Well, we do, and we also have to fight against the war on poor people because that's what we've experienced over the last few years. I mean, if you just think about it, $10 an hour, he denigrates that and says people should make $50 an hour, well, that's just great, but then you're going to oppose all of the policies that could lead people to higher wage jobs. So I really think that it's important that we look at underneath what they are saying and what their premise is, which is basically that people are poor because they've made poor choices and not looking at structural barriers within our economy, within our education system, and within our communities. Congresswoman Karen Bass and Maria Theresa Kumar, thank you, thank you both for your time this evening. Thank you. Thanks Reverend. for having us on. Still ahead, Dr. King's final campaign.